Hello, my name is Rocky Johnston. That's me, uh, as a baby. So I was a super active little baby, and as a child I had inclinations to do almost everything. I got into everything. I would have been considered pretty ADHD by today's standards. My interests would change minute to minute. Academically I excelled in all my classes, but over time I started to lose interest. I got older and I was ready for more. I felt like I was being held back in these classrooms for eight hours a day, five days a week. So I tried to go to college right out of high school and that was kind of a mistake for me. I didn't take it seriously at all. After experiencing a couple of years of hard life lessons, I decided to go back. I didn't really understand college my first time through. I just was kind of going and not really paying attention to anything other than how I felt about it. Um, I started to realize that the methods of learning really are focused on what interests you and are meant to help you propel into where you want to be in life. Once I started putting in effort and seeing results, I really, really got into it again. I started to really love learning again. And then about a year ago, I started to realize that graduation wasn't that far away. And I had to start figuring out what university I was planning on going to. I went to conventions and I gathered information. I was seriously thorough. And of course, I talked to my parents about it. My parents really liked the fact that it was close to home. So then after comparing all my options, my answers started to become increasingly clear. So being the social creatures that we are, Whenever we start to do research and want to figure out more about something, we tend to just start to talk to other people around us about it, and that's exactly what I did. I would ask people who had already graduated college, who were already in college, what they liked about college, what they didn't like, what they thought they were going to get out of it in the end, and how much they learned. I ended up talking to a lot of people. And everyone that I talked to about SEMO was super, super genuine. And you could tell that they really, really enjoyed their experience. They talked super highly of the culture, the facilities, the professors, the overall learning experience. There wasn't anything that was lacking. All right, so we're gonna have to talk about money eventually, and everybody knows college is expensive. But SEMO might surprise you. Let's take a look. The average cost, and tuition, if you look it up on Google, is 34000 at private, 9900 in state, 25600 for out of state. That's at collegedata.com. Now, if you jump over to Value Penguin to do a little bit of cross-referencing, you'll see that they estimate the stats go on and everything pretty much lines up expensive. Even Missouri sits at about $8,000 on average for in-state and 21000 for out of state. When you look up SEMO, the first answer you get is actually underneath the average for Missouri's. There are some calculations on the website that show your entire cost over the course of a year for everything including your housing and food, one-time fees, additional fees, etc. And when you do the math, it comes out to be about $208 a credit hour, which is remarkable considering most colleges of the same stature sit around 300, 350, even 400, 500 dollars a credit hour. This is also before scholarships. SEMO offers a ton of different scholarships for every type of individual. They even have scholarships that are guaranteed entry for every single person accepted. I'm just gonna leave it at that. You get the point. So I just realized I forgot to mention, I'm a biology major by the way, and I'm still into business and I find art amazing and fascinating and I'm still basically into just about everything. And the awesome thing here is, SEMO totally caters to that. They have 200 different degrees and the specializations just get deeper and deeper. Like my minor is actually a biological science entrepreneurship. Who to thunk? And since we're still here on this website, 
I want to show you a couple of things that are awesome. I don't know if you all have ever worked with a school that has a terrible website or just been on a terrible website at all. It sucks. SEMO cares. They really, really put a lot of effort into everything on their website, the way that it's laid out, the tabs, everything is set up to be really efficient and really user friendly. And I also want to show you this tool that they have on there. It's a 3D concept map. So here's the link right here. And I'm just going to show you some of the features of this map. It's a great way to find your way around campus, being a new student, or if you just need to find a new section of campus that you've never explored. This map has everything you need down to information about each of the buildings, where your academic and administrative buildings are, student housing, dining and refreshment, points of interest, parking and transportation, campus health clinic, athletics and recreation, emergency call boxes, computer labs, and it has all the building labels. And then we have these awesome panoramas. They're super detailed, and there's over 40 of them all around campus. So we'll go ahead and zoom out from these general service buildings located right on Cheney Drive. And I wanna show you this other amazing feature called the Pegman. You can take the Pegman and drop him almost anywhere on campus, inside and outside, and take panoramas of the entire location. That way if you're trying to find somewhere new, you can almost never get lost. Plus, lucky enough for us, all this is right here on our phone. This lot shows each of the employee, student, bike racks, and handicapped parking lots, as well as the shuttle routes. And you can isolate each of these locations through features on the pull-down tab. If you follow South Spanish Street straight up from the river campus and make a left on Broadway, right after you hit Sprig Street, you're gonna enter one of my favorite buildings, the Southeast Innovation Center. When I went to go film for this project, this is what was going on in the ground floor of the Innovation Center. The ground floor was filled with conference rooms and open space to do projects and other group work. And then upstairs were more centers for collaboration, including a career pathways center and a resource library. I can already tell I'm going to be spending a ton of time in this building. Here's just to give you some reference of scale for the buildings. It's a nice little aerial view for you. All the way over to the field. Then if you keep heading down campus, you'll hit Normal Avenue, which bisects campus right in the middle. This is where you'll find the library, the academic hall, and the university center. On the opposite end from the university center, you have the Growell Building, a great landmark, and this is where the communication, English, and mass media classes are held. If you pan over further down campus, you'll see the beautiful residence halls and all of these amazing buildings where all of your classes are going to be held. And everything is kind of sectioned up from art to science to English, so it's easy to work your way around. Residence halls line the campus. They're located in and throughout, which is awesome for students. And then the far end of campus is dedicated to sporting events and being active, housing the Show Me Center and all the recreational sports fields. It's a pretty amazing setup. It would take a really long time for me to get to it all, so I kind of had to give a condensed version. I hope it was enough to intrigue you though. I think Southeast has pretty good justification for having one of their mottos, we'd love to tell you, but we'd rather just show you. Thanks again everybody for watching, I really appreciate it. And by the way, this is for a scholarship, so if you wouldn't mind helping me out and sharing this video, I need to get at least a thousand views by December 1st. So I appreciate you guys and you're awesome. Go Red Hawks.